going guys? Um, Pedro here. Um, we're going to go through and show you how to um, put a game rod together. So out in the bench you'll notice I've got all of these components here. Um, and we'll start uh, from the beginning I guess will be the best place to start. So I'll show, show you how to um, put a uh, ferrule on to take your uh, uni butt. Uh, then we'll go through and fit the grip to it. Um, do some guide spacing. Um, a little bit of binding and some guide alignment after the binding's done and then we'll go through and do an epoxy on uh, the first coat of the epoxy anyway on the uh, game rod. So we'll keep it fairly basic and simple but um, we'll just show you the steps involved in putting the game rod together. So if you want to have a crack at building one of these yourself you've got at least you know some sort of uh, idea where you need to start. Okay guys, um, this is the first step that we need to do. So what you can see is you've got the end of a blank here, the bottom end of the blank, and we've got our, uh, our uni butt here, number one uni butt, for this um, 10 to 15 kilo rod. So what I'm going to do is take the uh, ferrule out the end of the uni butt, sit it over the end of the blank, bring it up hard, and then uh, what I'm going to do is mark where the end of this is just with one of these whiteout pens, that's all you need. Just to give you a mark so we know that that's how far the ferrule's going to sit onto the blank. And the next step that I've got to do now is I've got to take it over to the lathe and key this out so that when we do our glue we get a proper, proper bonding. So I'll take it over the lathe and I'll give you a look at how we do that. Okay guys, uh, so we've got the rod in a lathe here. You can see it's just a normal little uh, workshop lathe that we've got here. You, if you've got one of these, it, it's probably the best way to go. However, if you don't and you've got a reasonably strong motor on your normal rod lathe, then you can probably achieve the same results by doing it on the rod lathe. Uh, because I've got this here, I'm going to use this. Uh, anyway, right, so what we need to do, you can see right here, that's where the mark is that I put on earlier, where the end of the ferrule comes to. So we'll get this spinning and uh, I'll show you what we need to do. First thing I like to do is I take off the uh, paint, or the first layer anyway, just to give it a, uh, the glue somewhere to sit. Okay, that's probably good enough. The next thing I like to do is, uh, this is a very important step. Yeah, um, what I like to do is put um, three or four keys into it so that the, the glue's got a ring to sit into and um, basically it, it forms a really strong bond so you don't need to go very deep just like that keep them about an inch apart this one here will just do three and that allows you some room here to uh, pack your ferrule out with the tape so it's a little bit deeper with both of them or three of them okay basically that's it keyed ready to go There you go. Okay guys, so we've now got the end of the uh, blank all keyed up ready to fit the uh, ferrule to it. But um, I guess the next step that we need to do is find the spine of the rod and uh, put a bit of a mark on it. So there's many and very different ways of finding the spine. I basically just have it sitting on a, a surface down here on the bottom and I put the rod under a bit of a load, roll it around until it's in the right place and then I just Give it a little bit of a rub up and down there. That'll give me where the spine is. Okay, so I can see, you may not be able to see it on the camera, but I, I can see a mark on there. I'll just put it a little bit further down there. So, okay, there's our mark. All right, so what I want to do after I've got it marked like that, I'll just uh, find where the mark is. There it is there. And I'll just put a small white mark there so that when I pack and fit the ferrule, I can see where the centre is. Okay, so what, I'll get, what we'll do next is uh, I'll um, pack this uh, ferrule out and as you can see, I can put the tapes in between the grooves that I've already set into the rod on the lathe. And it's, it's fairly important that you, you try and keep the gluing gap as a minimum. The less glue uh, gap that you've got the stronger the bond's going to be okay um, sometimes we can't avoid it when we're using a little bit bigger size butt to what the blank is but um, you can generally find that uh, 
you can find something that gets fairly close, right? So the other thing is that by packing this out like this, you'll also get it on dead square to the blank. So that's, that's a fairly important thing that I've found. The squarer it is, uh, it'll become evident a bit later on when we start machining grips and things like that. If you've got it straight and not wobbling all over the place, it's going to make for a better finish for you. So it's a bit too much there. I try and uh, get this so it's a fairly snug fit. Okay, so that's fairly snug now. So I'll take that tape off and now we'll just check to make sure that this ferrule is going to go on. It's still a bit tight there. Take a little bit more tape off. Okay, that's nice. That's that's very that's going to keep that dead square on the blank. It's a nice snug fit. So I guess the next step that we'll do is we'll uh, mix up some two-pack epoxy, um, some really high strength one. You, know, you want to try and find a very high strength one. One, one off the shelf at the hardware shop's probably not going to do the job for you. You need to. I'm not going to suggest what brand you should use. That's up to you guys. But um, what you're looking for is very high strength and very high temperature resistant. Because remember, these rods are going to be out on the back of a boat, and um, generally, if it's a game rod, it's going to be in summertime, so it's going to get quite hot. All the uh, alloy fittings will get quite hot sitting out in the sun all day, so you would need to make sure that your, your two-pack epoxy glue is going to be able to uh, withstand that temperature. So anyway, I'll get on and mix some glue up and we'll glue this in and, and then we'll uh, put the butt into the, into the holder over there and get the alignment right with the backbone. Okay, guys, uh, like we said, we packed that um, ferrule there before. You can see the tapes there, so the next step is obviously we glue it on. Again, I can't stress enough about the high strength two-pack epoxy that you're going to use and, and also importantly is uh, you know your, your temperature resistant for when these fittings get pretty hot out in the boat so put a, uh, a decent amount of glue on there it's better to have too much in there than not enough you can always wipe the excess away after we fit it up so I'll just wipe a bit more in there get it down the back here a little bit okay so also with these ferrules, they've got, um, most of them have got little keyed ridges inside them. I don't know if you can see that. That also helps with um, the stopping any rotation of it once it's all glued up. So I'll just wipe a little bit in there. Okay, just wipe a little bit of glue in there. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so now what we're going to do is fit this up. So what I like to do is I'll roll it around like that and you can see that the glue is sort of filling up the voids, same there, make sure that you're sort of backwards and forwards and get, it doesn't matter if you drip a bit off, we we'll clean that up later. And you can see now that there's a full layer of glue in between those two there. And we'll keep working it until we get the same thing here. Just keep rolling around, that glue will sort of roll around a bit. Okay, so there we go. We've pretty much got a full coverage of glue between the ferrule and the blank itself now. So, um, uh, Charles will get me my rag here. Thanks very much. And I'll just um, take that excess off. And if you want to, you can get yourself a little bit of acetone or methylated spirits, any of those like that, will remove the excess glue off the ferrule there. But pretty much got rid of it all there anyway, so... That's nice and tidy. So the next thing I want to do is uh, I'll um, put the uh, the butt on, and I can see you can see here I've got my mark there, got my mark on the uh, blank where the, where the uh, backbone is. So what we'll do is we'll fit this up, make sure that we're locked in there. Doesn't matter if it turns a little bit now, and then we'll take it over to the rod holder and line this spine up properly with the uh, gimbal sitting in its uh, location. All right. Okay guys, so I've got it in the rod holder here. You can see I've got a rod holder welded to my bench here and um, I've got that lined up all perfectly square. So what I'm going to do is lock the uh, gimbal into the, to the uh, rod holder and so I know that, that it's all sitting dead square and then you can see I roll it around that there's the mark there. I'm going to put that right on top dead centre of the uh, ferrule and just line it up with my eye. And that looks pretty good to me. So what, what I'll do with that now is I'll just leave that in there and that can, the glue can go off and cure a little bit and then we'll come along and do the next step. Yeah, so um, let it cure and um, 
just read the recommendations on your epoxy, how long it takes to cure. Um, we don't need it to set to its full strength. As you know, the longer that epoxy has been mixed together, the, it, it will set to a full strength. As long as uh, we get this cured enough so that it's not going to roll around when we fit the grip, that's all we need to achieve for this. Okay.